Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a system of equations for positive integers. This problem is for, from Soros Math Olympiads from a long time ago. I don't remember which year, but I've seen it um, online. Anyways, we're going to be looking for positive integers. Uh, we have six variables here, by the way, A, B, C, N, M, K. And uh, so this is kind of like a Diophantine system. Now, this system could look very intimidating, but don't worry, the solution method is actually fairly simple, in my opinion. Just let me know what you think. So, looking at the first equation, and they're kind of similar to each other, so if you can find an approach that works with the first one, obviously it's going to work for all of them. Notice that uh, we are looking for positive integers. So, all the quantities here are positive, and the left-hand side, obviously, which is n to the fourth power, uh, is um, contains a to the fourth power. So I can safely say that n to the fourth power is greater than a to the fourth power because it contains a to the fourth some, and some other positive terms, right? So this implies since n, n and a are both positive, this implies that n is greater than a. Similarly, we can say the same thing for m greater than b and k being greater than c. Great. Now we want to turn these um, into something more workable. So since n is greater than a and n and a are both positive integers, we can say that obviously the smallest value for n would be a plus 1. So n needs to be a plus 1 or larger. So I can write these inequalities in a less strict way, such as n is greater than or equal to a plus 1, m is greater than or equal to a b plus 1, and k is greater than or equal to c plus 1. Awesome. Now, this is helpful because if you uh, raise both sides to the fourth power, you're going to get the following. So if you look at our first equation, it was a to the four, fourth plus 14ab plus 1 is equal to n to the fourth. And now we know that n is greater or equal to a plus 1. Therefore, n to the fourth power is going to be greater than or equal to a plus 1 to the fourth power. And we can do the same thing for the second equation, b to the fourth plus 14 bc plus 1 is equal to m to the fourth, but m is greater than or equal to b plus 1, therefore m to the fourth is just going to be b plus 1 to the fourth. We can easily uh, raise both sides to the fourth power because these are all positive quantities and we can do the, uh, the opposite. And for same thing works for uh, c to the fourth plus 14 ac plus 1 which is equal to k to the fourth, but k is greater than or equal to c plus one, as you can see here. Therefore, k to the fourth power is just going to be greater than or equal to c plus one to the fourth power. So we kind of get this uh, nice uh, set of inequalities. And forgetting about these terms here, uh, you know, the ones that are in the middle, kind of like forget about these ones, we can safely uh, associate the first one and the last one. So. Let's go ahead and see what happens. Let, taking the first one into consideration, a to the fourth plus 14ab plus 1 is greater or equal to. Now, I'm going to expand the right-hand side. I have a plus 1 to the fourth power on the right-hand side. Let's go ahead and expand it. It gives us a to the fourth power plus 4a cubed plus 6a squared plus 4a plus 1. So some of these terms are going to cancel out. Let's go ahead and simplify this. a to the fourth is going to cancel out one is going to cancel out. And obviously we can divide both sides by two now, and we get the similar, or I should say, well, let me do the following. Let me rewrite this inequality after the cleanup, and then I'll tell you what we're gonna do next. Obviously we can just go ahead and factor out a 2a here, and that's gonna give me 2a squared plus 3a plus two, and whatever I do with the first equation or inequality, I'm going to be doing it for all of them. So I don't really need to go through all the steps here. Let me just show you one. Now we can divide both sides by 2a. Notice that a is not zero. It's a positive integer. If you divide both sides by 2a, you get, oh man, 2a, 2b or not 2b. Anyways, we missed that one. 7b is going to be greater than or equal to 2a squared plus 3a plus 2. And similarly, whatever we did for... Um, the first equation we can do for the second equation uh, and basically what we did was expand the right hand side and then simplify as much as we can and then factor and then simplify and the third one so second and third one is going to give us something similar to this and it's going to look like 7c is greater or equal to 
2b squared or not 2b plus 3b plus 2. And then with the 7a, we're going to get greater than or equal to 2c squared plus 3c plus 2. Great. So after all these manipulations, we are getting these inequalities, which is kind of nice. But still not very nice, so we have to make it nicer. How do you make it nicer? We can add these inequalities. Let's go ahead and add them up. And obviously when you do, uh, some of the terms are going to simplify, you know, bring, we'll bring them together, so on and so forth. So we get 7a plus 7b plus 7c is greater than or equal to uh, 2 times uh, a squared, b squared, c squared. But, well, I don't need to factor it because I need them separate. And then 3a, 3b, 3c, and then plus 6, right? Okay. Now, what we can do here is significant. We can bring the 7a, 7b, 7c to the right hand side and then kind of switch sides or flip sides so that we can have the terms on the right hand side. So the left hand side becomes the right hand side and vice versa. And this gives us the following 2a squared plus 2b squared plus 2c squared. Now notice that we're subtracting 7a from 3a. That's going to become negative 4a, negative 4b, negative 4c, or if you want to call it minus, that's fine too. And plus 6 is going to be plus 6 because it is already on the right hand side. Great. So this expression can be simplified even more. Let's divide both sides by 2. And 2 is a positive number, so it's cool. a squared plus b squared plus c squared minus 2a minus 2b minus 2c plus 3 is less than or equal to 0. I know what you're thinking. Oh man, wouldn't that be nice if we had a plus b plus c quantity squared or something like that. But don't worry, this can still be simplified. Now we're going to be separating the 3 into the 3 pieces and write our expression this way. a squared minus 2a plus 1. And then we're going to get b squared minus 2b, yay, 2b or not 2b plus 1. And then c squared minus 2c plus 1. And 1 plus 1 plus 1 is equal to 3, so it's all good. But guess what? This gives us the sum of three squares. Isn't that awesome? Well, that was intentional, right? When they wrote this problem, obviously they thought about this idea, but it's really cool to come up with something like this. Anyways, so I can write it as a sum of three squares and something that is less than or equal to zero. But as you know, sum of squares in the real world cannot be uh, negative. So it has to be zero. This gives us what? This needs to be zero. This needs to be 0, and this needs to be 0. So from here, we get a equals b equals c equals 1. They're all 1. Well, how do you find the values of the other ones, right? Well, we found the values of a, b, c, but how do you find the m and k from here? Well, you can find it very easily if you just plug it in. Uh, if you think about the first equation, let me show you the original one. OK, here we go. So we know that a and b are both equal to 1, and this is equal to n to the fourth power. So if you replace a and b with 1, you get 1 plus 14 plus 1, which is 16. So you basically get from here n equals m equals k equals 2. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.